Hi there. Um, I just thought you'd like to uh, have a look at uh, the setup which I've got going on here for Singing in the Rain at the Haymarket Theatre in Basingstoke. Uh, I'm using uh, the house uh, console, the Midas M32, with some uh, DL16 stage boxes. And uh, yeah, the, sh the show's pretty loaded. I've got pretty much every input and output used, and using a lot of the features on the, the, the console, which I, I just kind of want to share, um, show you what, what I'm up to in, in a theatre context, and, and show you how I'm uh, sort of applying it for the show. Uh, hopefully, you might find it interesting and might be able to use it on some of your own shows. Um, so, yeah, so I mentioned uh, a full channel count. Pretty much. Uh, so I've got here um, uh, four float mics uh, in red. I've got uh, 20 radio microphones, which uh, I've had to do uh, automation for. And uh, I've got eight channels left. Uh, I've got some dangling microphones over the orchestra pit uh, and a couple of uh, instruments of the lower frequencies, like the bass, uh, DI'd, just so that uh, I can get um, sound. It's mainly for on stage monitoring. Uh, just a, maybe a little bit of uh, reverb for out front because it's quite a small uh, theatre. So yeah, uh, we've got um, also got um, the AUX uh, returns here, uh, which I'm using uh, five channels for sound effects, split up left, right, on stage, left and right. I've got sub because uh, we've got some uh, thunder and lightning effects. Uh, I've also got a, a, a video f a feed from, from upstairs from the lighting department. Uh, Got my uh, uh, effects, reverbs, etc. And uh, on the outputs, um, various different uh, speakers scattered everywhere just so that people can hear what's going on during the show. So, on a pair of on stage speakers, we've got a, uh, an off stage speaker left and right, we've got uh, some upstage speakers, and also a speaker for uh, the pit uh, for the MD so he can uh, hear what's going on uh, with the cast and check on my mixing. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, I'm utilising the VCAs and uh, I've utilised the uh, feature of snippets to kind of control uh, on a scene by scene basis what, what is going on uh, and who, who, who's on so I, I don't have to be uh, juggling around with all, all, my, all my fingers. Um, the other thing that I've also implemented is um, utilising the MIDI function so uh, all of the, the snippets and MIDI cues are all uh, uh, combined in the, um, in the, uh, the uh, home page of the uh, automation, the show control, and uh, yeah, I'm triggering sound effects even off the board as well, so that I, I just have to uh, keep an eye on the script, keep an eye off everything that's going on stage, and scroll through the cues accordingly. So, uh, so yeah, I think we'll do a bit of a zoom in, and I'll show you some of the uh, uh, the, the features that I've used on the console. So one thing that I'm using on the um, uh, on the console is the uh, the auto mix function. Um, it's actually uh, helped uh, enormously because I've got a couple of uh, instances where uh, I really um, need its help. Uh, so uh, the, the reason why I've put these float mics on the first uh, four here is that so I can use um, uh, the uh, eight channels uh, within the eight channels of an auto mixer on the console. So um, the idea being is that with the float mics, I've got four microphones on the front of stage, and uh, when, when I raise um, uh, them up on here, I've got four mics live on stage. But people are moving across the stage. There are sometimes people speaking to the left and to the right, and uh, it's mainly rather than four open mics permanently on, I, I'm kind of adopting it so that uh, I can have a, a bit more of a cleaner sound rather than four mics permanently on. So I'm kind of in effect doing. Uh, oops, doing this, pushing the volumes uh, in when a particular area uh, is being used, uh, except it does it automatically. So uh, I'm using the uh, uh, the X uh, side. Um, all the gains are the same. All the um, uh, the weighting is the same. And uh, so if I, sure enough, if I turn up the volume here on the, the VCA, um, you might be able to hear some background noise. But uh, just to give you an idea of what's going on. Uh, I'm going to go to the uh, the setup and disengage the uh, auto mixer. So now, when I turn this up, you can hear hear it kicking into feedback. But uh, if I do that, let's do that and switch the uh, auto mixer on, you can see that it um, pulls the gain back down, and I've got an awful lot of control. So let's have a look. We can see 
what's actually happening here with the game. Um, uh, you can see all of them uh, are being, uh, all the games are being shared. And uh, when someone walks in front, uh, it is in effect turning up that particular microphone whilst turning the others down. So it really cleans up the stage. Uh, I'm also using the Y section, so the, uh, the second group, uh, for actually a couple of uh, microphones of uh, the Lavilio mics that we're using. So um, Don, our lead character, is, uh, uh, well, he's singing in the rain. Literally, we have a, a water truck where he's going to get um, completely wet. So uh, as a backup, I've actually provided two microphones uh, on, uh, on himself. And uh, uh, rather than sort of... Uh, uh, sort of jump again in between the two microphones I've set uh, auto mixer so that uh, I can smoothly go from one to the other so during the show I've actually found myself having both microphones turned up and uh, when it comes to the water scene uh, I just keep an eye on what's going on here and if there is a, a failure of one of those I um, uh, a channel goes down uh, the good thing is, is that the gain doesn't suddenly drop down in volume, it keeps everything level and consistent. So we've had it once, uh, I believe, at the moment, um, but uh, sometimes that clears back up and I can bring up the fader again and we can uh, keep a, a balance mix rather than it jumping up and down. Okay, so automation, I'm uh, utilising uh, snippets. Um, so I have a master scene, I don't know if you can see the screen here, hopefully you can. So I've got uh, different savings of both the beginning and the end of each uh, show that we've done. And I, I normally like to load uh, from when I last uh, you know, made some tweaks and uh, changes. So we've just loaded up the um, last week's uh, Saturday evening end show file. And uh, in, in my queue list here, I have a, a few, uh, few tests going on so uh, let's have a look so I, I like to keep everything start everything at zero um, so let's just load this scene see what's going on here so I've got uh, all of my faders at zero uh, as a kind of starting point during the show um, if I'm doing any slight alterations I can make uh, during the show I can have those and have those continue throughout the scenes um, let me just load uh, the soundtrack um, scene so one thing that you can do within the, uh, the home page uh, here is uh, link uh, both scenes as well as snippets. Uh, the snippet, in its simplest uh, form, is like a reverse of uh, scope. Uh, you actually just recall what you want to recall. Um, so you don't have to scope everything else out. That's kind of done or assumed automatically. So uh, I'm just telling it to change um, the DCA, uh, either the, the fader levels or uh, um, the, the naming, so uh, hence why I've got scribble strip uh, ticked. Uh, groups, because I want to, uh, the assignments to change. Um, sometimes I'm doing fader and pan, sometimes I'm not. And of course mute groups as well, so uh, I can control who walks on stage and who walks off stage. Uh, the other thing that I can associate with this cue list is if I scroll over to the MIDI, you can see here, I can actually, uh, for each uh, particular queue, I can choose uh, which, uh, which queue, whether or not uh, it's changing a, a particular MIDI note or program change. I think I'm using notes. Let's have a look. Yes, I'm using uh, uh, notes on here. And uh, I've got a, a Cubase, uh, sorry, not Cubase, QLab even, um, a computer with um, uh, all my sound effects to the right here, controlled. And yeah, I've just assigned every queue uh, a particular number so that uh, I'm scrolling through and it will um, it will play a specific uh, queue. I don't have to uh, keep in sequence or uh, uh, worry about going out of sequence and playing the wrong sound effect. So let's just give an example of that now. Um, I, I've got some test uh, um, of pink noise which I've made on the actual um, queue lab itself. So let's just do test left. Right on stage, right on stage, left and the sub. Great, great. So, I have here a, a pre show um, that's uh, my pre show ready to go, and I've got all my cues, clearance, and all the different um, cues programmed in depending on people walking on and off. So, this is all related uh, to uh, the script. So we've got here, Singing in the Rain. 
and uh, as you can see, all of my uh, um, particular cues. I've kind of what, what I've done. I, I, in terms of the time to program this, uh, it's not possible to do a kind of line, complete line by line mixing. So I've kind of like broken it down in groups of, um, in this case, up to five people uh, on stage. So. Uh, uh, if there are any um, people in addition to that, I then break it down to another scene. So you can see here, uh, I've got different people and different sound effects also simultaneously being triggered. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, uh, some notes as to whether or not uh, certain people are added to the group. So uh, let me just play through some of the sound effects as well as the, uh, the scenes for you. So. This is our clearance, all ready to go. So the orchestra is up, ready to play. Uh, act one, I've got the, uh, the, the applause uh, from the theatre um, uh, as a sound effect playing in the background. And these are primed, ready to go, so that when they walk on stage, I can turn them up with the crowd being uh, and on in the background. So in this instance, if I can show you here, I've got the, uh, uh, the DCA controlling the float mics for the crowd on stage. Let's scroll through. Uh, a few variations of applause, so uh, a little bit louder, quieter. Uh, scroll through. Just going to uh, pause the sound effects there. So now we're in a, a slightly different section. Uh, we've got a, additional people joining the. Um, uh, uh, coming onto stage, so um, this is kind of set up to remind me that yep, Simpson is the character that there is ready to go, so I can turn him up. And these are primes, ready to go, so that when they uh, they come on stage, I can turn them on accordingly. Uh, let's go to uh, some more scenes just to show you what's going on. So um, sometimes I've brought the faders down, and other times they used to make such a fuss over me. This is just. This stimulated my oh, There we go. Let's just go through some of these sound effects. I just wanted to show you that sometimes uh, the faders don't change uh, the position, so let's have a look. Cool. Um, yeah, that's how I'm using snippets, um, MIDI cues, and, and the cues uh, for automation for this show. Okay, uh, in addition to the mixing desk, I'm also using the uh, um, USB built in the, uh, the back of the console uh, so that I can do 32 track uh, recording and also playback as well. Uh, that's been invaluable for going through the script and uh, checking, uh, going through and checking just on headphones that I've uh, got all the cues correct and that I haven't switched uh, things uh, on when they shouldn't be on, etc. Um, uh, yeah, so I've got that. Uh, a useful tool for sound checking. I've also got um, the iPad control as well, which means that I can control uh, the desk, uh, and most importantly, I can control the uh, the monitors on stage. Um, the best part about that, I can actually use that in combination with the multi-track and actually hear what the cast hear on stage, so I can try and get a, a good mix for them so they can hear what's going on. Okay, so I'm using the DL16 um, stage boxes on stage for all the uh, radio mics and band. Uh, I also have um, uh, the inputs here for auxiliaries for uh, the uh, um, video playback as well as the sound effects. Uh, I've got the connection uh, to uh, the stage boxes here, MIDI connection. I've got uh, Ethernet control for the, uh, um, the wireless router for uh, iPad control. Uh, below there, I don't know what you can see, I've also got the uh, USB for the recording and uh, um, outputs to the main PA system off the, uh, the theatre. And if I swing round, we've got preparations for the show uh, as we speak, so there's a show this evening. Um, uh, I'll show you the uh, orchestra bit. So we have uh, on-stage speakers, left and right. Uh, we also have some infills, uh, which I don't know whether you can see in the dark here. There we go, our main PA stack uh, with the subs and the orchestra pit, which is uh, currently vacant, but we have microphones across uh, the front of stage here. Um, a few of them, just because I've uh, uh, lacking in channels, I decided to Y-split as well. And we've also had to move the drum kit 
because of lack of space in the pit to the uh, uh, off side of the auditorium. And uh, just to keep him connected, the drummer connected to uh, the MD, we also are utilising uh, the P16, where I've sent a, uh, a mix uh, for him uh, at various different uh, parameters. I think I've sent uh, all different stems of the orchestra, as well as uh, a mix of the vocals as well. Here we have the on-stage control. I've got uh, two DL16s and a uh, radio rack with uh, 20 microphones and a spare. Ooh, let's get that in focus. And let's have a wander on stage as well. Uh, so here we have the uh, uh, on-stage speakers, left and right, as well as uh, microphones suspended over the orchestra pit. Uh, so that uh, I can capture what's going on. We've had to, uh, just because of lack of channels, we've had to Y-split uh, some of them, but they seem to work. We've got float mics here as well, so four across the front. And uh, yeah, let's have a look upstage as well.